welcome everyone here to the Smash Board Show right here on Smash FM midweek here in Melbourne. But of course, uh, let's uh, go across to our friends over in WA. Of course, been with uh, of course uh, one of the uh, National Premier League women's teams over there in WA. Of course, that uh, is the uh, MUM uh, Football Club. And of course, we've got five very special guests joining us right now to tell us a bit about uh, obviously the current season over there at the moment. Uh, thanks all five for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Well, get the five of you to uh, int introduce yourselves and uh, and tell us for the players in particular what position you play on the field. Well, that's probably easy for me. I'm the head coach, so I don't play at all. I just stand on the sidelines and, and watch them. <laughs> my name's Steve. Uh, my name's Tiana, and I play a bunch of positions already. So My name's Emma and I play centre midfield. I did play defensively, now it's kind of more holding because I love to run. <laughs> um, my name's Danielle. I'm currently in defence, but I'm trying to go for midfield, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> that would be complicated. <laughs> um, my name's Esther and I'm a defensive forward, defensive midfield. Yeah. Tell us a bit about uh, the season uh, so far up to this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're three games into the season. Um, I'm new to the club this year and virtually got a brand new squad. We've only got one or two existing players from last year. The rest of the girls are brand new, coming from different clubs and past clubs that I've been at as well. Um, yeah, look, for us, it's about learning and developing this year, getting to know each other. I think the girls have bonded really well off of the pitch, but we've just got to work on them on the pitch to get that bonding as well. But, uh, early days and there's been some great improvements so in three games. Yeah, I, I think as Steve says, um, we're all kind of new as a team. Um, we're kind of super excited for the potential the team has. Um, we're looking to build on, on that. But we also know that um, it's probably the most consistent season so far that we've been in work. Um, I know in Eastern States, you guys stay really consistent throughout the years. But for us, um, this year the year has kind of settled. And teams are looking really good. Everyone's looking really sharp. The competition's really tough. So um, we're looking to make a name in the competition and really, um, really get some good results. Uh, tell us a bit about the game that you played on the weekend. Well, a bit of rivalry. I actually used to play for them. And Steve used to coach there as well. I know quite a few of the girls. But we did start off all right. And then it just went a bit downhill. But... You learn from it, and then the next game, the only way is up, you know? Just got to keep being positive. How strange was it for both of you to, uh, you know, come across against your former teams? Yeah, it's, it's always hard against your, your former team because obviously you know a lot of girls and, you know, the committee and the coaching staff there. So I guess the nerves are a little bit higher once you're in that situation. And, yeah, you know, we wanted to win that more than anything, but on the day we just didn't get there. But... Yeah, it's tough, tough playing against you know, former clubs. I think we had like lots of, of like very good play with possession. Um, but I think to start off with, we just need a bit more intensity. But we've shown that in other games, so we know we have it in us. Yeah, no, I think as Danny said, we've shown potential in the three games we've had so far. Um, the week before, we played NTC in a night game on Wednesday night at the new Santa Football Stadium. We looked, we were winning 1-0, you know, and then they scored an equaliser in about the 70th minute, and then they scored a winner, unfortunately, in the 95th minute, so pretty much the last kick of the game. So that was pretty uh, devastating for the girls and myself, but we took a lot away from that game in terms of our improvements, and yeah, then we look at that, we learn from it, and we move on, and we keep developing. I think it comes down to being switched on for the full game and not being, yeah, losing it for like one split second. Yeah, how's preparations been like for uh, round four? Come off a good, <laughs> we had a good training session last night. It was pretty intense and we worked with girls pretty hard, but we played Red Star this week who were uh, quite a very good team. They won the comp the last three years in a row. They probably only lost a handful of games. So we know we're up for a tough battle, but 
we feel that if we can be intense and work hard as a team and um, stop them from creating chances, then you know, who knows on the day. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we had a bit of a surprise at the end of training last night. <laughs> Our sports trainer um, went to do some runs, so that was good. That was good. I think I think with that in mind, um, that's kind of put a bit more mild and a bit intensity in play. So um, obviously, we're hoping there's going to be a taper, and then by the time we can come to the next one. I think um, the plan and the coaches what they have in plan for this week is is, is Three rounds in, um, and obviously you've got a pretty new team uh, from the previous year. I guess, is is everything still on track? And we're going to the trajectory from hopefully, you know, getting to where you just want to end up, not just this year, but beyond this year? Yeah, look, I think you know, technical director Sam Gallagher, who's obviously spoken to me you know, before I joined the club and also regularly you know, throughout the season. And for us, it's about developing a good culture at the club where girls want to come and play more so than results at this stage. And I guess I get a bit, um, yeah, want the results straight away. But, you know, for us, it is about developing. You know, results will come. It's just a, it's a program of, of works, if you like. It's, it's not a... A one-year thing, it's a multi-year program to develop in that time. How much of an inspiration was the Women's World Cup last year? And have you seen more girls and women get involved or even come down to your games? Um, not just last year, but this year. Well, I, when I went out to the city, say, prior to watching the World Cup game, I mean, the women's games are personally up. Uh, where it was called the place, there was even little boys wearing like Sam Kerr shirts, and that's just huge because it was a lot of my guy friends that have even played professional. They'd be like, No, back in the day, I'm never watch a woman's game unless it was to curb on the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, okay, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I think that's pretty true. Like, you see that it's not even, it's not even affecting. The women's culture, female's culture, but um, I think our registration for girls have also gone up. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve and I were involved in a, a girl turn up, turn up day or like a registration day, yeah. and we had a, we had so many teams down, and all mm -hmm. of them were basically new players. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of a lot with some of the coaching that I do, but you know, people, the girls just want to play, and the uh, World Cup that really pushed the girls to get involved. And it's great for us as well because we get to be role models for these girls. We get to, you know, be the NPL players that they get to play. They go get to go and say, hey, look, I want to play just like them. I just want to, I want to play just like NLS though, or maybe I want to be a coach like Steve, but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a good one if you want to talk about definitely, definitely giving participation uh, in other way, not only for girls, but for everyone. Really. I think as well, the ground we have here are uh, beautiful. Um, and a lot of the clubs we play at, like we play at Planned Parenthood, I was so impressed by the quality of that ground. Um, and I have a lot of friends who aren't particularly sporty or athletic at all who are very interested to come watch, which I do think is probably triggered by the World Cup and if people want to be a part of that, we want more exposure to soccer now. Um, so, yeah, and I think that's a positive thing as well, supporting women's sports. Um, how do you, you get involved in the world game and why did you choose it? So I grew up in New Zealand, actually. Um, and New Zealand, um, back, in, back in my time, anyway, uh, forced primary school kids to go and sport. You had to um, do a winter sport, which I think is a great, great idea um, because it encourages you to get into like a team. It teaches you a lot of resilience, a lot of skills. Um, and I originally actually started from badminton. <laughs> I don't know why I had, had played before. I was rejected from that. Um, and then so my second option was soccer and, and playing in the backyard was like my, my sister before but hadn't really played that seriously. Um, so that was my aim. That was when I was eight. Um, and back then, especially because soccer wasn't as big for females, I think pretty much all of us would have grown up playing in boys' team as like the only female. Um, and I played that first season and 
I just loved it. And I just, I picked up really quickly. Um, and yeah, I've just been playing ever since. I haven't found anything that's come close to it. So, that's mine. Um, for me, I'm going to go into year three or four, and I was doing, like, I was finishing school and then going to dancing and then going to soccer. And my mum said, no, that's enough. <laughs> and I had to choose between the two. So, I, I had so much fun playing with boys, and I was, you know, in year three or four. So, yeah, it wasn't much of a response for me. Mine was a bit different. It used to be a boy that had a Perth Glory soccer ball. And he used to, he had ADHD, well, has ADHD, ADD. And he used to go and kick the ball, then dive and grab it. And then I said to him, let me play with you. And he said, no. And I said, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. <laughs> and then I started being the goalkeeper and vice versa. But then I used to play tennis and do cross country as well. And when I was older, my parents said, no, you need to do team sport. You need to be social. And now I just have never left soccer. Mm. What's your start? You can't stop. Yeah, no. <laughs> and football as well. It's just mm. soccer's everything now. Um, yeah. Mine started when I was, I was playing hockey and I kind of had a bit enough of it. Um, I was up until 13, 14. During that time, I've been playing like backyard soccer with my brothers and my dad. Um, but the, the kids were in the street, so we've always been playing soccer. Um, but I never considered it as like, a sport to play because I thought hockey was my thing. And then I kind of had enough. Hockey is extremely political. We say football is political, but hockey is probably worse. And then at 14, I decided to join my first team in Mandra. I played there for a couple of years. Um, and then 16, 17, I had to move to Perth and I met Emma. We played at Queen's Park and we were all the clubs. And we kind of know each other since then. So it's kind of weird to know Emma since I was 17, 18. Um, to now and be still on the same things. Um, but she also introduced me to futsal, um, which is a great sport. I love futsal a lot. Um, lots of fun, lots of touches. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my journey. Me. Wow. Well, I'm originally from England, so if you didn't play football in England, you're a bit strange. So obviously, you played for school teams, Sunday league teams, um, moved across to Australia when I was about 15 and moved to Victoria. So I played um, Premier League in Victoria for many years, then come across to Perth with my work. And when the knees started to hurt and the ankles, <laughs> so gave it away, but then I took up triathlons. Um, yeah, so <laughs> represented Australia twice in age group world championships and yeah, but still missed the game as such. So started to coach and yeah, just kind of love coaching and in particular the women's game, just really enjoy getting something out of that. So for me, it's been a, a long career if you like and yeah, just enjoying the coaching now with uh, the girls and uh, one or two of them. Okay, I'm going to ask the two players in particular who mentioned about coming from a racket-based sport. Uh, so any any similarities at all to two completely different sports? Uh, any similarities between, you know, your two racket sports uh, for both of you and obviously what you're playing now? I, don't, I can't play racket sports, so I don't actually know where that initial drive advantage came from. I think um, one of the things that I enjoy, I think we're very, you know, like we've got really tough, strong players as well. Such a physical component to soccer as well, um, which you wouldn't get with racket sports, unfortunately. So, I mean, it, there's a big difference. No, and I think racket sports as well, more individual based as opposed to team based sport, which I don't think, I don't know. I've done a bit of um, like running and other things like that as well, and I don't think anything comes close to playing with a team. Um, yeah, but see, for me, I think tennis and soccer go hand in hand because you jockey back to get the, the tennis ball and you hit it and calmly. It's like players like Roger Federer, for instance, or Igor Swiatek. Don't need a smash the ball, but they can just play it simple. But then there's other players like Nadal, that's a fighter, and he will give everything, two types of play but successful champion. But anyway, I when I played in America, the tennis coach actually said to me, you would be a good tennis player because there's so many similarities. It's just being able to 
quickly see where you have to go and things like that and just reading the play well but also the mental aspect of it like i've seen players win be up six mil six zero sorry the first set second set get absolutely demolished and that's just like for instance with soccer once again we we could have won against NTC and then we just lost focus for a split second. It, it, they all combine. That's how I see it. And then one more thing, like Iggy Swerta individually will beat everyone, but then when she plays with, with Poland with passion, with her representing her country, with her the Polish player male, then they lost because it was so emotional, and it's a hard yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I love the two sports, so yeah, I think they go on. Whatever happens to all my rest of my inches for the rest of the year, that is the quote of the year. So um, go no one's gonna beat that. Uh, so that explanation. So, so. <laughs> Very passionate. Yeah. I love all sports. <laughs> Uh, what does the sport of the world game mean to all of you, especially being there at uh, Murdoch Uni uh, Marvel uh, Football Club? And the second part of that question, particularly for the players, what have all four of you learned from each other on and off the field? What does the sport mean to me? Um, well, I think I've got so much passion for the sport that, you know, I get a lot of my confidence and, I guess, validation from the sport. Like, um, and it's always brought my family together. So I think it's just, yeah, it, it's a huge part of my life. And um, I think just when I see myself play well or play well, you know, with, like with my team, I just get, you know, really proud and quite happy. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, this is my second year at Randolph. So I'm happy to play it again and see it with Randolph. Still new, so we're still learning. Um, I think like just individually, you know, there's great people on this team. Um, we've got a mix of ages as well. So I think we're probably the older people in the group. <laughs> and then Yeah, yeah. And there's like there's we've got people like Georgia who's fifteen. Um, and I guess what we provide is, you know, encouragement and hopefully bringing her up to, you know, increase her confidence and everything like that so that she wants to stay in NPL, you know, play like semi semi professional and can keep going with it. Well for me, I I spent like a lot of years in good. Um so I think the last the last year I played, which was with Steve's team back in Fremantle, um, and I got injured in a scratch game and then was out for the entire season it was like, four years ago. Um, so I've been battling with injuries since then. So this is my first actual year back um, in NPL. So I see every game training as an absolute blessing. Like it's a privilege to be able to play and it's really joy to be able to play and something that we can take for granted, especially because so many athletes do get injured um, and there's such a mental toll to that as well. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely love the game. I love the team. I think we've got a really good culture. Um, so yeah, it's definitely games on Sunday are hard of the week. Um, and and although yeah, the running sessions and other things at training is not always the most enjoyable, <laughs> you do grow so much physically and mentally um, with soccer. So yeah, I just enjoy it. Okay. So for me, I went to a high school English as a second second language, Melbourne. So I used to take my soccer ball under my arm to school and there'd be a lot of African boys and Muslim boys that couldn't even speak English yet. And they would just go like this to me, meaning <laughs> give me the ball. And I'd be like, okay. And then I'd recess and lunch. I wouldn't go and sit with the girls. Uh, even though I was friends with everyone, I would be playing soccer 24 seven. I'd be the only girl. I even had a Muslim girl come up to me and then ask me, say to me, you know, I like to play soccer. And oh, then no. I said, oh, you can come join in. And she was like, I'm not allowed to. But now it's more acceptable in some families, which I understand. But it's just, and I'm still friends with a lot of those people as well. So it's just crazy how such a worldwide sport just brings everyone together. And it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I have learned 
because <laughs> I was a soccer coach for younger children for a while as well. Then I had to leave Two Points Park and they all cried. So that was when I was younger. It was actually Melbourne. And um, oh yeah, I've learned to try and not because everyone learns at their own paces to try and be a bit more calmer and just listen a bit better. Because I'm just so go, go, go. I want to win and I know win is not everything. But you've got to just play the simple part. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's just if you just play simple and then you can get better and eventually you'll win right. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Um, I think my point is kind of like what um, Danny said and what Emma said. Um, I think a lot of it is like self expression. You know, if you're having a bad day at work or, you know, something happens, you know, you can kind of get your relief through playing. And, and it's not always in an angry manner. You know, sometimes, you know, doing something that's simple and beautiful is so, so satisfying that, you know, you go, oh, that was beautiful. Or that kind of way, there's, there's a bunch of times where I've the girls and even myself, oh, I kind of want to, I don't want to go to training, I uh, really want to feel like it's not. Well, as soon as you go, you get the running, you, you feel like, oh, actually, I'm so glad that I went tonight. Like, that mm -hmm. was worth it. Like, I really, next time, I'm definitely going to go. So I think definitely self expression is one, and um, also community, like feeling like you belong to something that's a little bigger than yourself. Um, getting to the competition, knowing Emma for all these years. Um, mm -hmm. So, and and obviously learning from these people. So, what you learn from people, Emma and I, we have a really good, <laughs> we have a really good um, uh, uh, rule or, or uh, we work well together to make sure that we don't, um, we don't go too crazy in training or we don't, don't say too much or, you know, say masses and clothes because we can be competitive. So we know that um, that can also affect some of the girls. And sometimes we do lose it, but I think we can keep each other in check. And um, I feel like I've just looked a bunch of the other girls because also knowing how we can learn from them. Like some of the girls are better training than we need to and that's really nice to check. So, um, no, I think expression and the community and everyone has Yeah, I think for me it's, um, you know, you kick every ball, as they say, when you're a coach, you see the girls out there playing and, and especially this year is going to be a great year for us. It's going to be a great, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be a great challenge because, as we said, we've got a brand new squad of girls and all ages, as Danny said, we've got Georgia, who's 14 years old, played on 16 girls, did two last year, and now she's playing MPL first team and beats herself up to me because she did this wrong in the game. It's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's okay, but, you know, you'd be okay. Just um, relax and do the things you're good at. But, you know, we've all got stresses in life with work and everything else, and it's good to have that release to go to training and see the girls just developing. Um, I like to treat them as people, not players. That's a big thing for me. It's, you know, it's all individual personalities. And, and my biggest challenge is how do you bind those girls together and, and all go in the same direction throughout the season. So, yeah, look, I just love coaching the women and the female with the girls. Uh, I've done all my coaching career and, yeah, I think we all pick out of it, seeing the development and, you know, that, you know, half time talks and pre game talks and that training, you know, when the girls are, Listening, they're on board and they want to learn and develop it. It's a feeling for me as a coach. So, yeah, it's, that's what I get out of it. I don't want to embarrass you, Steve, but I'm going to ask the players this question What have you learned from your coach? Nothing. I'll speak on this one. Oh. So, all my coaches my whole life have pretty much used negative reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Whereas Steve's been very positive the whole time, saying, come on, we got this. And it's really weird for me because I'm like, hang on, how do I handle this situation? <laughs> because when I coach, I've used positive reinforcement myself with young girls. But he's just positive, positive, positive. Whereas at half time for myself, I used to get, like the whole team, whatever team I was on, I used to get real, like, you know, and and it's like, you know, like I even played with Lisa Devana a couple of seasons ago and I took a throw in and there's two types of people. I'll state it then. She, I threw the ball in, foul carry. 
And I was like, I'm going to do South Rose one. Second, she was like, how, can you, how long have you been playing for? So I put my head down. And then she said, answer the question. Me, game. And she was walking. Then I answered it. And then I didn't stuff up again. So there's either one that will crumble under pressure or two that will be better. Anyway. So, so anyway, but the point of the story is, so that's how I learned. But a lot of girls, you've got to be positive with them. Which is so there's two types of things. So it's like, good job, Steve. Thank you. And I think because we are such a new team, I think that was the reinforcement with what we need, especially right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had highs and lows this season already, um, but I think, you know, there's no point getting discouraged by the lows because, you know, it doesn't give that forward momentum. Um, so yeah, I really like that it's been really good, mm -hmm. you know, from the yeah. I think Steve mentioned it early in the season that his style would never to shout and yell as a means to, um, to make a point to, to a player. I, I, I think that's a really good start to take, especially with our young team. Um, because if you're in a culture where you feel safe and feel respected, you're actually going to thrive a lot better than when you may to feel like you'll be humiliated for your mistakes and things like that. Um, and I, I definitely think I see that in our young team, especially you know, when, when we all make mistakes, we are very encouraging to have it up and we keep going. Um, and I think that's a really, you know, even if we lose the game, but we kept that culture, and I think that's more important in the game. Yeah, I, I um I agree with everyone and um I think Steve's done really well in a sense where he's been our coach, but he's also allowed us, you know, that one bit of dream to have our uh, input into the game as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not only is he just telling us what we need to do and when we need to do it and what the triggers are, but you know, he's he's kind of asking people when we have a specific thing where before the game, we say, we have to solve this problem, what is the problem? And then we get a half time, okay, have we identified the problem? Everyone talks, we discuss it, we, we, we think of ways of how to solve this problem. And then hopefully by the end of the game, we, we work ourselves really, how to, how to you know, identify what the problem is, how to solve it, and put them into an action. And I think that's really great. I think it's fantastic because, um, like we said, it's the, the ultimate goal is to see players with other that's what he's doing. He's not here for us to be, you know, to be super strict and, and perform and get results. Of course, that's going to come, but for girls that are 14, 15, 16, a little bit older, the best way they're going to develop is by getting, getting a brain <laughs> and, and by thinking for themselves and identifying mm -hmm. what issues are. So I think that, that, that is the really... And I think my positivity has come because I've played pretty high level throughout my career and I've been in change rooms where coaches have thrown things and you know toss chairs across the change room and you know, into the bay and I it's thought to myself, you know, when I thought I would be a coach, but I thought if I ever was a coach, that wouldn't be the approach that I would have. It's, it's about being positive. Um, I think you can be firm, you know, in your talks and try and get the best out of the girls, but if you're negative, like it just back eyes on me. Um, it doesn't help anyone. So always try and remain positive even though sometimes you know, but that's that's the game, isn't it? So you know, you try and stay positive, reinforce and keep going. I think also technically, um the scene has been good, like you can see Steve's got a commitment into our skills. Um for example, he's put in video video clips as of this week, um, of individual you know, things we can work on, I think we did really well, and I think that's really good for individual improvement. Yeah, that's something new for our team. Yeah, I think also through my diploma just recently, my coaching taught me a lot as well about how you manage players. Uh, it's not, you know, the textbook stuff, it's about those relationships and how you can get the best out of what you got, those your strengths, and not necessarily playing the same formation, but what works best for the girls and what works best for each game. So, for me, as you always just answer my next question, Steve. Um, you know, how special is to hear that from your players, and especially how special are the four players that you've got there doing this interview? So, look, it, it is very special to get, get that feedback. I mean, I think we all try our best at the end of the day, whether that's a training or in a game, and, and you just hope. 
that you can come away from a game and you have helped them in some way, regardless of results. You know, if you see some good things in there, that's that's a good testament to the girls' work rate at training and on match day. Um, yes, yeah, so look, so to hear those comments is really nice. Uh, these four guys here are you know, quite special to me within the team. Um, I won't say they're the old ones, so they're the more experienced players. And I can confide in them you know, quite regularly. Yeah, as Fiona said, I often do come to these guys and say, well, this is not really working, what do you think? And I'm always open for input. And, you know, because I, I don't have all the answers, no coach does and no player does. So for me, it's all about a team and I'm part of that team. So we all find drawing in the same direction. So that, that's important to me. So to hear those feedback now is really, yeah, great. Fish, I'll cover lighthearted questions about the team. Who's the comedian, the best singer, and the best dancer on the team? Well, I said the non, yeah. <laughs> our goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Like, she was just, uh, we had the, when we had the game on Sunday, she was just minding her own business before the game, you know, I think she's really good at that. Um, yeah, and then Sam was just standing there with his The best, the, the best dancer, but she, but, but she really does. She's really the best dancer. Right? The playlists are interesting too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, 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 no, some really girly ones I do, and then everyone's <laughs> like, "This is cringe," and I'm like, "Why are you singing along then?" <laughs> but all the gangster yeah. things, Taylor. <laughs> I would say, you, okay, so best singer. Maybe not. We haven't heard people sing yet, yeah. yeah, but we we'll probably have to do like a carry for next. Definitely not. Um, <laughs> but I think Lou knows a lot of the lyrics. She's always not, she always knows the lyrics of every song. So either she knows every song really well, or she does. <laughs> it says on the side who's Irony Creek, who um, added a song. And I'm like, interesting. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. They don't add songs to the group. There's like four of us that do it. Who's a comedian? Ella's pretty funny, but we just let Emma keep talking. Well, if no one speaks, I just keep going. <laughs> Any pregame superstition or ritual by either of you? I do, but you guys go first. Uh, uh, I don't know what it is. Like in my car, for instance, I've got this little bear when I brought my car that I have to touch its head for good luck. Then if the other day I was there was in the change room there was a bottle cap, so I picked it up to put it in the bin and I'm I turned it over and I have a little smiley face on it and what did it say on it? I, I made her touch it so then she was happy during the game and not sad. <laughs> but I always do a thing where I tie, I tie my shoelaces up and I have to be tight and at half time I have to do it again. It's just a mental thing. And I tuck my t-shirt in as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Maybe yeah. a bit of OCD just somehow, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Emma has enough for all of us. Yeah. Emma has enough for me. For me, it was left foot on first every time. Not with the laces up until I was walking out. Any one to add <laughs> no, no, I think you covered yeah, I think you covered that one. Uh, you beat me for that one, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Well, one thing I love is pre-game tunes. So, do you just have a pump-up song? Whatever, <laughs> whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever Taylor puts on. If I don't like it, then I put my own headphones in. <laughs> yeah. And there's this song called "Pump It" by Endor, <laughs> which or like "We Are the Champions." <laughs> Everyone knows that song because you got to think like a champion, oh, then yeah, you yeah. play like a champion. Mm -hmm. Superstitious. <laughs> um, I've dabbled in a little bit of uh, John Cena recently. Oh. So the time is now, which initially I listened to Ironic Clean and I was like, that's actually a really good hype song. Mm -hmm. So I'll be in my car and I'll be listening to that on the way. And here I am composed. 
Um, that's a good one. Put it number five. Yeah. Yeah. No, I need it. Five. 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 All right. Uh, All right. Yeah. Fish is always good. Fish. Losing it. Losing it. Don't know that. I don't know. She comes down here. You listen to the song. You like. I'll play my app off, but that's not my question. Yeah. Okay. It's just like coming by. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, this, 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 that, and everything. Whatever, whatever I'm doing on the day. Um, the girls do a bunch of things. Okay. Any good nicknames in the team we should know about? Or oh, yeah. I think everyone's just T. Like, yeah, we're actually, <laughs> like, we're just, or like T or G. Like, G, yeah. 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 T or G. Yeah. Yeah. I was it's calling you from MG. Yeah. I call Brooke Danny all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brooksy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hate Taylor. I'm a girl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. And then Emily. Yeah. <laughs> oh. They're still getting to know each other before Nick makes them. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on the band, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Be your advice to people that should get involved in the World Games, and also get, especially getting down to, uh, of course, Murdoch Uni, uh, Melville. And as and the second part of that question, what's the one thing I should do when I get when I come to your game uh, later on this year? You can touch my bear in the car. <laughs> <of the park. laughs> its name's Bear, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, you yeah, can see. What was the first time you Oh, <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. we can bring you a welcome sign. Free entry to the change room. Yeah. Free game talk. How's that? And half time, you can sing for us. Oh, <laughs> you can choose the song. Yeah. Yeah. Choose the song. That's, to easy. Easy. That's easy. You can watch us win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Passion. Love, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think as we said, it's, it's, it's a team environment. It's you know, a good opportunity to get out and meet new people, develop that community, as Tiana said, and yeah, just be part of something that you know, we've all got a common goal to drive towards. So uh, to me, it's about again, you know, just finding the team together for that common goal or direction. Not win. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's like you have another family for me, pretty much. So it doesn't matter if you win or lose all the time. Obviously, we prefer to win. But yeah, it's just lovely. And then even doing outside activities with the girls, it's, it's good fun. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want to challenge yourself, I think that's a big one. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I think with me, she's done dancing her whole life. Yeah, yeah she's doing soccer. She's doing you know, she can tell she's got a lot of passion. She's wanting, you know, self improvement, and yeah, I think, yeah, it's a great sport for that. Mm -hmm. I think we use a lot of transferable skills, like even in non sporty areas, like in work for me as well. The like, making decisions under pressure, physically exerting yourself, mentally exerting yourself, and coming out of that. I think you know you can you can utilize a lot of those skills in a lot of other places as well. And I think it's a it's a really sad thing when um think the stats like women playing sport after 25 drops down so significantly. Um, especially in sports, I suppose like soccer, more contact sports, more demand and sports like that. Um, which is a real shame because I actually think that it improves the quality of life rather but I think a lot of people get stuck in the kind of mindset of work, you know, um, repeat, etc. But yeah, it adds a lot of balance to your life. Um, I think it makes them all well, well, Audie, thank you so much for getting up some of your time to join us. It's awesome having uh, all of you on the show. Can't wait to uh, come over to Perth uh, later this uh, in about June um, to uh, watch you all play and uh, hopefully uh, everything all goes well, especially this coming week's game and uh, and uh, can't wait to follow this team uh, between now and uh, when I come over there in June. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been good fun. Thank you. Thank you for time. We'll see you then. <laughs> Have the popcorn ready. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, good. And of course, if you want to come and support them uh, throughout the rest, uh, throughout the season, of course, we'll put uh, all the details up on the next couple of games and uh, come and go out there and watch them uh, in action uh, throughout the 2024 season. There's more on the Smashboard show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration.